welcome back to double A's medicine and in this video I'll talk about the scapula its uh, side determination points uh, bony landmarks muscle attachments the ligaments on the scapula in the end I'll also talk about the clinical aspects of the scapula which are a must to know uh, so stay tuned till the end of the video and let's get on with it okay so now we'll talk about the side determination on the scapula so scapula uh, side determination points will help you help you decide whether the scapula belongs to the left side or the right side so uh, if you see here the anterior surface the anterior aspect of the scapula it is uh, quite concave it is shaped like a cavity and the anterior aspect also possesses bony ridges oblique bony ridges these bony ridges are formed as a result of the tendinous insertions of the subscapularis muscle though they are not visible here uh, on the posterior aspect the posterior aspect of the scapula is uh, quite uh, convex it is bulging outwards and the posterior aspect also contains the spinous process this is the root of the spine and this is the spinous process uh, the posterior aspect is divided by the spinous process into a supraspinous fossa and infraspinous fossa which we'll discuss later also to distinguish between the medial and lateral side of the scapula this is the medial border of the scapula this is the lateral border of the scapula the medial border of the scapula is quite thin mm -hmm. the medial border of the scapula is quite thin as it is observable here and the lateral border is thicker as compared to the medial border the uh, medial uh, the lateral side the lateral uh, side of the scapula also contains the glenoid angle the glenoid angle is really large largest of all angles and the glenoid angle also contains the glenoid fossa the glenoid fossa is articular uh, with the humeral head to form the glenohumeral joint so it always projects laterally so considering all of these side determination points we uh, conclude that this scapula actually belongs to the left side because the glenoid uh, fossa projecting laterally uh, and the medial uh, border is thinner and uh, the posterior aspect of the spine it's facing uh, towards us this is the posterior aspect and this is the anterior aspect so this belongs to the left side so the scapula is a triangular bone and scapula rests on the posterior lateral chest wall since it's a triangular bone uh, we can say it possesses it possesses three borders it possesses three angles and uh, it possesses three bony landmarks it also has uh, three surfaces so uh, everything is three uh, because it's triangular bone that's how you can remember it it's a q the scapula if we talk about the borders of the scapula this is the superior border this is the medial border and this is the lateral border as discussed earlier the lateral border and the medial border can be distinguished because medial border is thinner and lateral border is thicker between the medial border and the superior border we have the superior angle located between the medial border and the lateral border we have the inferior angle and the, this is known as the glenoid angle glenoid angle is the largest of all located between the superior border and the lateral border okay this right here is the posterior aspect of the scapula how do we know its posterior aspect because we discussed earlier it possesses the spinous process okay superior to the spinous process we have a triangular plate of bone this triangular plate of bone this is called the supraspinous fossa and uh, below or inferior to the spine we have the infraspinous fossa so uh, if we talk about bony landmarks on the scapula so on the anterior aspect we observe that we have this coracoid process this is a beak shaped coracoid process the beak shaped coracoid process uh, uh, has an anterior surface and it has a tip this is known as a tip of the coracoid process uh, and uh, on the posterior aspect there is another bony projection this bony projection right here is known as the spine of the process this is the spine of the process spine consists of a thickened region this is the thickened region of the spine this is called the uh, crest of the spine the crest of the spine contains a lower lip and an upper lip this is the upper lip and this is the lower lip right here the root of this is the root of the spine this this is the spinous process and spinous process continues and forms a flattened process this flat process right here this flat process this flat process is called the acromion process an acromion process is articular right here it is articular this is the articular surface of acromion process it is articular with the uh, acromial end of the clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint uh, so that sums it up for the bony landmarks on the scapula 
uh, we also discuss some notches let's take a look at some of the notches on this capilla so right here I can pass my pencil through this notch this notch is known as a suprascapular notch and suprascapular notch uh, is very important because it consists of a ligament that bridges this gap this ligament is called the transverse scapular ligament and the transverse scapular ligament is important because below the ligament we have the passage of the suprascapular nerve and above the uh, ligament we have the passage for the uh, suprascapular artery that is a branch of the uh, thyrocervical trunk of the subclavian artery so the next notch on the scapula over here is the spinoglenoid notch this is known as the spinoglenoid notch you can remember this by the fact that it's bridging the spinous process and the glenoid fossa the glenoid fossa consists of two tubercles right here this is the first tubercle this is the second one so the this tubercle this tubercle is known as supraglenoid tubercle because it's located superior to the uh, glenoid cavity this is known as the infraglenoid tubercle because it is located below the glenoid cavity right so in the next segment we'll discuss some uh, important muscle attachments on the scapula all right so let's talk about some uh, muscle attachments on the scapula so we'll move anterior to posterior uh, order if you talk about the muscle attachments on the anterior aspect we have this uh, subscapular fossa right here and on the subscapular fossa we have the origin of subscapularis muscle on the medial anterior aspect of the medial border we have the uh, digitations of the serratus anterior we have the insertions for the digitations eight digitations of serratus anterior so on the superior angle we have the first digitation of serratus anterior on the medial border right here we have the second and third digitation of serratus anterior and the fourth to eighth digitation of serratus anterior are inserted onto the inferior angle uh, on the anterior aspect we have this uh, suprascapular notch and this bony ridge located right medial to the suprascapular notch this bony ridge right here this gives origin to the small muscle of the neck known as the omohyoid uh, we have the then we have the dorsal aspect of the scapula or the posterior aspect uh, the posterior aspect of the scapula is divided by the spine this is the spine of the scapula this right here and the spine divides the scapula's posterior aspect into the supraspinous fossa and the infraspinous fossa the supraspinous fossa gives origin to the supraspinatus muscle the infraspinous fossa gives origin to the infraspinatus muscle right and uh, if we uh, look at these muscle attachments right here so on the dorsal aspect of the scapula uh, starting from the superior angle and extending all the way to the root of the spine we have insertion for levator scapulae muscle on uh, the upper half of the medial border on the posterior aspect we have the attachment uh, yeah uh, sorry the insertion for the rhomboid minor muscle and on the lower half of the medial border we have the insertion for uh, the rhomboid major on the inferior angle on the posterior aspect of the scapula we have the origin for a very large muscle of the back this muscle is known as the latissimus dorsi muscle and latissimus dorsi muscle also takes part in shoulder joint movements okay so uh, right here on the uh, on the lateral border on the posterior aspect of the lateral border of the scapula we have this origin this is the origin on the lower half of the lateral aspect of the uh, uh, scapula uh, lateral border of the scapula we have the origin of teres major muscle teres major muscle uh, is also in, uh, is also uh, important in the uh, shoulder joint movements also on the uh, lateral uh, border upper half of the lateral border we have the origin of the teres minor muscle on the infraglenoid tubercle we have the origin of the uh, long head of triceps brachii muscle right the origin also extends a bit below on the uh, lateral border so we have the origin of triceps brachii right here long head of triceps brachii the supraglenoid tubercle we have the origin of long head of biceps brachii let's uh, s discuss some muscle attachments on the processes of the scapula starting from the coracoid process this, this right here is the coracoid process the coracoid process uh, right here you can see the an insertion of a muscle the blues are insertions and reds are origins so the uh, this is the insertion for the pectoralis minor muscle on the anterior aspect 
of the uh, coracoid process. On the tip of the coracoid process, we have two origins. We have the origin of coracobrachialis and also the short head of biceps brachii. So, uh, on the spinous process, on the spinous process, we ha uh, we have the crest of the spine. Crest consists of an upper lip and a lower lip. The upper lip gives gives insertion to the trapezius muscle. Uh, on the lower lip of the spine, we have the origin of the deltoid muscle. Deltoid is also very important abductor of the shoulder, uh, and that uh, pretty much sums up all of the muscle attachments on the scapula. Okay, so discussing uh, some important ligaments on the scapula. So uh, there are five main ligaments which are attaching on the scapula right here. So the first ligament is known as the coracoclavicular ligament, and the coracoclavicular ligament right here you can see the uh, coracoid process of the scapula. The coracoid process is superior aspect. We we have the attachments for the coracoclavicular ligament. This right here. Oh, this right here is the uh, conoid band of the coracoclavicular ligament and this is the trapezoid band of the coracoclavicular ligament. The, this is important, very important because uh, the coracoclavicular ligament is uh, acting as the axis of rotation during the scapular humeral mechanism. Uh, and also the coracoclavicular ligament has to be very strong because uh, it is the ligament uh, which is uh, also supporting the weight of the upper limb. Uh, which is hanging on the trunk. So, this is the coracoclavicular ligament. Uh, the second ligament right here, which is embedded in the fibrous capsule of the acromioclavicular joint, we have the acromioclavicular ligament. And this is attached to the ac acromion process, articular surface of the acromion process of scapula. The next ligament is the coracoacromial ligament. Coracoacromial ligament. The coracoacromial ligament extends from the uh, from the coracoid process to the acromion process. That's why it's called the coracoacromial ligament. And this coracoacromial ligament is supporting the uh, superior aspect of the uh, shoulder joint. It's helping in the shoulder joint stability. The coracohumeral ligament right here, this is known as the coracohumeral ligament. This extending from the coracoid process all the way to the uh, lesser tuberosity uh, of the uh, humerus, this is known as the coracohumeral ligament, and helps support the uh, and uh, it helps support the anterior aspect of the shoulder joint. So uh, it is also helping in shoulder joint stability. So that is all uh, for the important ligaments on the uh, on the scapula. All right, guys. So let's talk about some clinical aspects of the scapula which are a must to know as first year medical students. We'll be discussing three major clinical aspects of scapula. So first up, we have the fracture of the scapula. Now fractures of scapula are really uncommon and uh, that is pretty obvious because scapula is adequately uh, covered by many, many scapular region and the superficial muscles of the back. So scapula is a well supported bone and is uh, not highly susceptible uh, to fractures. However, Fractures can occur on very hard trauma to posterior lateral chest wall, run over automobile accidents in which a person can uh, get run over by a car or a motorbike. Uh, so this can lead to random fracture lines uh, of the scapula, randomly fractured fragments of the scapula. And uh, usually reduction is not advised because uh, the all of the fragments, like all of the different pieces of sca scapula, they are all splint together, kept together by the muscles of the uh, back. So little reduction in the uh, scapular fracture is required. Okay, so next up we have scapular dyskinesia, also sometimes known as winging of scapula. And winging of scapula occurs uh, because of the paralysis of serratus anterior muscle. Now the serratus anterior muscle is supplied by the long thoracic nerve, which is the branch of the C5, C6 and C7 roots of the brachial plexus. When this nerve uh, has a lesion or it, it is broken or it is uh, just uh, not functioning properly so there will be a paralysis of serratus anterior serratus anterior is responsible for keeping the uh, medial border of the scapula tight against the posterior lateral chest wall however due to its paralysis the uh, scapula will be will lift up it will not stay against the wall 
and that will lead to protruding out of this scapula from the posterior lateral chest wall also abduction uh, beyond 120 degrees uh, of this shoulder which is achieved by scapular rotation is also not possible okay finally we have the uh, shoulder drop shoulder drop occurs because of the paralysis of the trapezius muscle just like we discussed serratus anterior uh, which causes the winging of scapula there is shoulder drop because of trapezius trapezius is supplied by the spinal accessory nerves which is the which is the only cranial nerve uh, which supplies the uh, muscles of the back uh, including the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid if there is a lesion in this nerve trapezius will be paralyzed and the person will not be able to lift the shoulders uh, like you do when you shrug your shoulders when you shrug uh, so this uh, condition is known as shoulder drop and shoulder drop is shown in the picture and as you can see the trapezius uh, upper fibers of the trapezius are and are not able to lift the uh, pull the scapula up so that's why there's a drop in the shoulders and guys that pretty much sums it up for the scapula hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did don't forget to leave a like subscribe to my channel and just smash that bell icon to get instant info and uh, updates on my latest content and uh, as always until next time mm -hmm.